from astrobackyard.com and in this video I just wanted to go over the deep sky imaging rig I've been working on. So if you haven't already noticed I'm in the new garage with the new house and uh, I'm too ashamed to take you on a full tour of it right now because it's still a complete mess. There's boxes everywhere we haven't totally unpacked so we'll save that for another video. But I've got a nice temporary setup here to show you the rig so let's go with that. The weather this time of year is notoriously awful here in Canada. This year seems to be especially bad. The clear sky chart says it's supposed to clear up any minute now. I think we've had maybe one or two clear nights that were about minus 30 degrees Celsius so far in 2019. Needless to say, I haven't been out imaging yet this year, which is really painful. But I have been working on uh, this rig in the background, getting ready for uh, a brief window of clear sky time that uh, if we do get it and it looks like there may be one or two hours on Saturday but we'll see how that goes. Speaking of brief imaging windows the rig that I was putting together had to be portable and practical and easy to get set up and torn down in a hurry so I kind of call this a uh, semi-permanent rig because a lot of it is put together I can carry the whole thing around at once but it's all ready to go. So there's a few features of this rig that make it somewhat automated and I can control it from inside the house. So once I get it up and running, I can disappear inside the house and stay warm and kind of monitor it from there. So first things first, let's look at the mount. This is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Uh, I received this mount in the fall of 2018, last year, and I've been using it ever since uh, when I get the chance and it's been very reliable and uh, just a great experience all around. The guiding has been great, the uh, SynScan system, which I know and love. Uh, it's just been an excellent telescope mount and it's got a payload capacity of 44 pounds. So this little lightweight carbon fiber refractor is no match for the EQ6R and uh, so it's more than capable of handling a system like this. Next up, we're looking at the telescope here, which is my Explore Scientific ED102 carbon fiber refractor. So 102 millimeters, 714 millimeter focal length at f7, and very lightweight, compact. Uh, is great at pulling in uh, large deep sky objects and even some of the medium sized ones. Not great on galaxies, but all around just a very versatile telescope. And I've been very happy with it. I've had it for a few years now. Mounted on top of the ED102, I've got an auto guiding combo here, which is the Starfield Optics 50 millimeter guide scope package that includes the GP Cam 2 monochrome camera. So this is a pretty easy and straightforward auto guiding system that's controlled using a, a software called PHD2 Guiding. Uh, it's so light, lightweight and small, uh, it really doesn't add anything to uh, the payload and it just works. I've been very happy with this system and uh, no need to change it. Next to that, we've just got this cheap little finder scope that I've mounted here. It's nice to have a finder scope mounted to your primary imaging telescope as well because uh, if you're doing a two or three star alignment routine on the mount, it's handy to have that wide field view to, uh, to find that star uh, early on. So the guide scope is mounted to the, uh, the handle on the cradle rings for the ED-102. There's a slot in here that you can uh, thread in a quarter inch screw to mount some uh, guide scope rings and that's exactly what I've done here. So. Uh, it's got pretty good balance because the guide scope and camera are right centralized on top of the primary imaging telescope. The balance overall of this telescope is really, it's been, you know, I spent a lot of time getting it like this. And as you can see with both axes unlocked, the clutches here, it's just got, it can, I can put it any direction I want it and nothing changes because it's so well balanced right now. Balance is really important, obviously, for astrophotography. You don't want your, your mount to be working any harder than it has to. So when it's nicely balanced like this, it can just smoothly track the night sky without having to work harder than it needs to and your auto guiding will uh, benefit from it. 
Next up, we have the imaging camera at the base here. This is a Mead DSi-4 monochrome camera, so the Deep Sky Imager. This is a new dedicated astronomy camera with a CMOS sensor, monochrome, as I said. It's a 16 megapixel sensor that's also found in the ZWO 1600mm. If you've seen any of the images taken with that camera, you'll have an idea of what to expect with the DSi-4. Very excited to use it. I've installed all the, uh, the correct software and everything to run it using Astrophotography Tool, APT. And then in front of that, I've got a Zeigel filter wheel. This is a five position filter wheel that holds uh, two inch filters. Those filters are the Optolong LRGB filter set. So luminance, red, green, and blue. And then the fifth position is a dark frame disc. So just an opaque black disc. So with this filter wheel and monochrome camera, I can run an entire imaging sequence uh, using APT and tell it to capture images through each filter to uh, build a color image using this monochrome camera in a single night. Uh, in the past, I've never had a filter wheel, so I would manually swap out filters, and that usually meant not messing with it and just shooting through one filter per night, uh, which either results in a lot of unfinished projects or just ones that require a one-shot color camera. So this system I'm really excited to start using, and a lot of the pros shoot with a system like this, usually a, a, a CCD camera, a monochrome through a filter wheel. In front of that, there is the Starfield uh, 0.8 times flattener reducer, which is a great match for this ED-102 telescope at F7. Um, also, what do we have here? On this side, you can see some accessories. This is some stuff from Pegasus Astro. So. Uh, early last year, late 2017, I installed a Pegasus Astro stepper motor box on the ED-102 and then uh, I've got the dual motor focus controller to, to run that. So that is controlled via my PC to uh, make fine micro adjustments to focus. Uh, and the best part about that is, aside from not touching the telescope to focus, is that I can do it from in the house. So say I'm monitoring an imaging session and I notice the stars are just beginning to get a little fatter each frame as the temperature has changed, I can make a, a very fine adjustments to the focus without having to come back out here and create new issues by you know touching the telescope more than I need to. So just having that precision control of a, of a motorized focuser is great. Also from Pegasus Astro over here you'll see the pocket power box. Now this does a number of things for power and it's mounted right on the telescope so I can control, I can power the camera, I can power the uh, focus motor controller, the uh, dew heater bands on here to uh, prevent dew are also on here and then uh, I can control the box and the outputs um, from my PC on the uh, dedicated software that comes along with the pocket power box. Really cool piece of hardware that uh, really reduces some of the, the, the cables running up to the telescope and as you can see, I've tried to keep things as streamlined as possible. I went a little crazy with the Velcro ties, about a 300 pack on Amazon, and uh, I've tried to um, consolidate some of the wiring here so nothing's catching on anything when I'm not around and creating issues that way. So it's pretty good, and uh, this is just the uh, temperature probe up here, which is attached to the, uh, the pocket power box. Overall, it's, uh, it's a pretty solid rig that's uh, really ready to go for some clear skies. The uh, portability factor is great because without these counterweights attached, I can lift the whole thing up, tripod included, set it up in the yard, and then uh, get up and running. So uh, that's why I've chosen this gear over some of the uh, heavier equipment that I have right now, uh, just because this is just a more practical choice when it's so cold and you know I might only get two hours of imaging done. So. Very excited to use this rig, and I just wanted to keep you guys updated. So this was a really brief overview of everything, but if you want a more detailed description, you can go to astrobackyard.com and check out my post on it. And uh, now you guys are up to date. Thanks for watching. Clear skies.